Welcome back everyone to the first episode of Grunstadt International Airport. Now this is a fairly long video so try to keep up and try to bear with me as I try to explain as much as I can. So I start off by placing down my runways and this is usually the first step in building airports in city skylines because it lets you sort of establish where you want what to be. I've, I say that a lot but that really is key. You want to make sure you have an idea of where you want something to be before you actually plan out and then you realize oh that's not in the right spot so this airport is as realistic as I could get it my goal is to be, have this the most realistic city skylines airport on YouTube but uh, flux trans biscuit housing and strict toaster did release their first episode of whatever FBS International Airport recently pure coincidence but still I don't know if this is still original content so this runway is 425 units long and keep in mind that each in-game tile or unit is 8 meters long. This That first runway I put down is long enough to land an Airbus A380. And I also left quite a bit of space in between it and the next runway, which is a little bit shorter to accommodate smaller planes. Uh, and I left enough space there to accommodate for the wingspan of an A A380, because that is the biggest plane that I have in my City Skylines library. No matter what, do not connect your runways to each other. Do, 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 don't create an intersection. Have them overlap each other and then use move it to just sync one of them down. Press alt and page down by default and it'll move it just a tiny bit down but it'll remove any clipping. Having them not intersect is essential because then the game won't glitch out. It won't have planes trying to curve on the runway as they're landing. It does glitch so just have each runway separate. Also, it's very important to note that what I'm doing right now is wrong. When I tested this later with what I'm doing with the taxiways, it did not work. Do not connect your taxiways to the end or beginning of a runway. You want to leave space between the end or beginning. I left like five units eventually because the airplanes did not want to land. It did not work. It just didn't detect a runway. There wasn't a landing point. So you see what I did right there? I stuck it right to the end so it connects. You want to leave space, five units at least. However, something that I did do right here is that I did make the taxiway angled. You want to angle them, that's typically realistic in airports, you don't want to have planes doing 90 degree turns, you want the turns to be nice and smooth, as wide as possible. I tried to keep a sort of realistic angle, uh, I don't remember what it was, I think usually it was just 45 degrees because it, there wasn't any clipping basically. Also, please remember that planes do have wings. I see a lot of people forgetting that and their build, and they put the taxiways right next to the runway. Yes, it looks far apart, but that's because the runways and taxiways are not a realistic width, and I'll adjust that in a later episode, I'm going to make them wider. But there is a wingspan. Planes do have wings, and so if you put them right next to each other, the game, they're just going to hit each other, even though it won't do anything. It's not realistic. So, I think I left about 20... 15 to 25 units, I don't remember exactly, but leave space between your taxiways and runways and your planes won't hit each other. <laughs> also, when connecting your taxiways to your runway, make sure you only have, at least I recommend, you only have two connections to each runway. You have an entrance point to the runway and you have an exit point off of the runway. Two taxiways and the rest just don't connect them. You can adjust that later with ploppable pavement by Ronix. It's very simple and that way you planes will always use one path and if you want, like what I'm doing, they'll use the whole runway. They'll land at the beginning because that's the only, that's, they have to land at the beginning, but they'll exit off of the end. They'll continue, t they'll continue till the end and I really like that. This part, I wanted to have a taxiway right after the end of the runway, but each runway does have uh, usually a blast pad or some sort or like I don't remember what it's called but it's basically this sort of structure that collapses under a plane's weight so it doesn't fall off the end of the runway and at San Francisco International Airport you have uh, the, the taxiway right behind that so that's what I wanted to do too and I just put down a blast pad so I have a reference over how much space I want there to be <laughs> While we have some less important stuff going on in the background, I wanted to talk about some things I wanted to mention. So first of all, yes, these videos are longer. This one is 40 minutes, and that's quite a while. If you don't, if you're just looking for a specific part, I do encourage you just scroll through the video, find what you want. And I'll pro I probably cover it, 
but this is just the basic layout this is just the essentials for the airport before detailing and all that not only does each episode it's in itself is it long but it takes a while to produce and so please have patience yes it takes a while it takes usually more than a week it's gonna take longer than city design but that's because it's city skylines and airports and city skylines are always such a hassle but i am trying to do my best something else that i did want to mention is that i took a huge amount of inspiration from airports like san francisco international airport sfo uh lax los angeles international airport it's probably the most recognizable name of all and toronto pearson it's, i've been there a lot so i looked at that layout quite a bit and the runway layout is more akin of that to san francisco international airport they have the they have a ton of runways so i tried to kind of replicate that but with fewer runways i think i accomplished that i think in the end it's fine but yeah but even though i took a lot of inspiration from airports like the ones i just mentioned this is still an original layout i came up with this myself but it is heavily based on a few different airports. So an important point worth mentioning is that when you're placing down your runways, you want them to be perpendicular to your plane path. And if you can't see it, get the more network stuff mod or something like that. It's by Bloody Penguin, it's on the workshop. It's really nice and it lets you adjust different transit paths as, as well as plane paths. And the reason why you want it to be perpendicular or 90 degrees is otherwise the, the game will glitch out and when your planes land or take off, they'll circle. They'll circle around the airport, they'll never get back on the pathway. It, the game glitches out because it, it's expecting the plane to divert off the path and onto the runway. But instead what it's doing is it's, it can't. It's, it's on the path already to the runway. And yeah, the plane AI in City Skylines isn't all that great if you haven't realized. Now, of course, you might see that I have three runways and one of which is parallel to the other two. So my workaround to that, which it still ended up a little bit glitchy, but so far it was working in my testing. Uh, I put it in between. So it would be the runways are 45 degrees to the, the, the plane path. And this way, they're not parallel, but they're also not 90 degrees. It was sort of that sweet spot in between. But still, I'd recommend you to try and build your runways 90 degrees to your plane paths. As to what I'm doing here right now is I'm creating the sort of layout for the taxiways for the airport terminals and this is how the planes are gonna you know go around they come from the terminals to the terminals or gates whatever you want to call it and I, I have two taxiways it's a loop basically and that's what I noticed a lot of airports of course taxiways are bi-directional for the most part in real life but city skyline doesn't have that so this is the closest I could come to it Hopefully also notice that I'm rounding off the corners of where taxiways meet. Again, you don't want sharp corners, planes take nice smooth curves. Yeah, for now this is sort of what we have before any final editing. So this is also really important if you don't want your plane to actually go where they want to properly without traversing the entire airport. Basically what I'm doing here is every 50 units I'm putting down a taxiway with alternating direction from the top from I don't know what to call it It's going from taxiway to taxiway basically but alternating direction and 50 units is actually 400 meters I'm pretty sure and this is purely based off of SFO They have the same taxiways every 400 meters and that's what I'm sort of doing <laughs> see on screen here right now is probably something that you noticed in any aerial photo of an airport like Google Maps or something is 
of course, each runway has multiple taxiways going to it. Not every little airplane needs the whole runway to land on or to take off of. And so there's always these multiple taxiways that are angled towards the uh, runway. And that's what I'm doing here. Of course, I'm not connecting them. Except for the one you saw there, but I fixed that later because like I said, you can't connect it to the end. And yeah, it's pretty simple for this one because... Not all runways have this perfect sort of taxiway system, I guess you would call it, where they all angle on towards one side on half of it and then towards the other on the other half. I'm trying to keep this one a sort of mix, but then you'll see that change in the other runways, the other two over there. I didn't give names to them yet, but it will. And yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Again, it's 45 degree angles, I'm pretty sure. And you can search up pretty much any picture of any airport, Google, go on Google Maps and you can basically, you'll see what exactly what I'm talking about and it's really simple to recreate. It's really just for, re also I am aware that it probably looks a little weird or a little off right now, but I promise that that will change in the coming episodes where we're going to be widening the runway and the, ta the runways, sorry, and the taxiways because they're an, ex they're an, an extremely unrealistic width right now. So what I'm doing here is what I was talking about a second ago. This is this has more of a pattern to it, like I said, and this is based off of Toronto Pearson International Airport. It's like basically exactly the same thing, and I'm putting these taxiways at a 125 degree angle because I thought that's sort of what suited it best, what matched the Toronto Pearson. Okay, and from there it's straight on to the terminal. And all these assets are by Vazmir22. He's an amazing asset creator. I'll talk more on that later. And th these are the pieces I'm going to be using for the terminal. This is mainly the large terminal pack. These are the pieces that I decided to go with for my terminal. And you can see the main structure is already built in the background. It sort of resembles a horseshoe. Fortunately, the footage of me building that actually got corrupted, so sorry about that. But it's really not that hard to understand. It's really, I just took the rounded pieces, I put them together, I put one of those core terminals, and then I made a smaller portion of the center round pieces. What I'm doing here is just creating the spokes, and I'm leaving some space using these passenger or citizen bridge, I don't know, pedestrian bridges, yeah. And I'm just leaving enough space for vehicles to drive under because there's always roads under and like really near close to the the gates and stuff and I'm trying to resemble that I'm just lifting them up a little and then from there I'll be building some uh, spokes it's really quite simple and Vazmir's assets they're really nice in the way that you can sort of create anything you want with his assets you can really just sort of mix and match everything but I tried to sort of go with what I saw on his uh, actual workshop post. He has a sort of little pre-built thing that he showcases how they can be put together. And I did bases off of that, but I also did try to put in some of my own stuff. I tried a few designs and this is the one I like the most. So I'm not going to be putting down any jetways or jet bridges in this episode, uh, but I might be putting them down in next episode, but there's still a chance I might not. You might notice in any picture of an airport, in most airports, that the jet bridges are elevated quite a bit. And there's actually a structure usually before the jet bridges that's high enough to let cars and vehicles and service vehicles, transport, all that stuff pass underneath. And unfortunately, Vazmir's jet bridges, as wonderful as they are, they're not tall enough and there isn't really a structure like what I'm looking for that uh, that is tall enough for vehicles to pass underneath so but but if you look at fbs international airport and you look at the little like 30 second clips uh, of cinematics that they released it's called the like, coming soon each channel has their own um but the, tr the structures are there and that's because vasmir created some custom assets for their airport and reportedly he's going to release them sooner or later for the public but until then i don't know really what to do because those those structures that I'm looking for are really important. So I think what's going on on screen right now is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just putting down the, the roads and this is the elevated portion. This is departures. Departures are always on top because you have to go through security and arrivals are on the bottom because that's where your baggage claim is and then you immediately leave the airport. 
and I wanted to have multiple lanes, so I decided not to use a highway for that. This is this portion that you see me do right here. I actually changed this because you can see I'm not using the proper roads yet here. I changed this later on, but I use the same concept, so I left it in. I actually use the three lane one way road on top. It's not a highway. It's just a road and I have it elevated six meters. I'm pretty sure. And first I put down some straight sections and then I just connected that and I didn't have to put down multiple sections. It was really simple. And then for here, you can see there's some clipping and I try to make it look as real as possible. And I, I really like how it looks in the end. And I just use ploppable asphalt to cover any clipping. And so that's it. That terminal is pretty much done for at least this episode. And now we're moving on to stuff beyond that. And the first thing that I wanted to do is connect transit. And what I'm using is the suspended monorail, again, by Ronix. He just seems to have an endless supply of amazing things. Uh, I really like, mainly this is just because how it looks, but I also wanted to have a monorail in my city. And all airports seem to have some form of the monorail. Uh, especially Toronto, it's really sort of iconic. But the spent monorail, in my opinion, looks great, and I think I thought this would be like a perfect place to incorporate it. The stations are pretty nice and small, and I can have a road underneath them, which is what I wanted to do, anyways. Um, this sort of portion, this segment covering roads and networks and all that stuff, is takes up most of the video, and it can be pretty boring. But it's such an essential part of the airport because this is how your citizens come to the airport this is how people come and leave the airport so it's really important speaking of trains that's what i'm doing right now I, you can see me putting down this glass station but i actually ended up going with a different one i think it's called like Drusilevas. you can see the one at the the menu down there a minute ago you, you could see it was the station right next to the one i was using right now on the right it's it has a two it's a four track station actually yeah there's two two pairs of tracks because this does loop around and I didn't want it going to the same station. Plus, I thought it looked better. But really, all I'm trying to show you here in this clip is just the loop I sort of create for the train. And this is the high speed line, by the way. I don't think I actually ever showed it that much, but I have it going all the way from downtown and it sort of does this sort of C around the city. So next up in the video, what I'm doing is I am creating the service roads. And here I'm going to be having service vehicles, again, by Vazimir22. He made, of course, some service vehicles. I've said that like three times already. Uh, but he made them as buses. So you can create a bus route and then assign those service vehicles to the bus route and have them drive around the airport. Because by default, you won't have them driving around. And usually these roads... Like you can see, they're usually really close right up to the terminal and to the spokes. But like I said, I don't have that structure that I'm looking for. So here I couldn't put them up against the spokes. And I decided that I'd be going with what San Francisco International Airport does. And they have them uh, towards the outside of the ramp rather than uh, right up to the, the gates. The ramp, by the way, and it's also called the apron sometimes, is the area where the gates and jet bridges are, where the planes get the passengers. Uh, usually marked by... You know what? Actually, I'm not going to say that yet. I'm going to say that next episode, because that's when we're going to be doing all the lines and stuff. But yeah, it is separated for the, from the rest of the airport, and it's sort of where just all the gates are. It also seems that a lot of airports, they have this road that sort of basically outlines the ramp and it it basically what it defines the area of where it is and that's what I try to do here too I think it works pretty nicely and after that it's right onto the highway connection 
Now connecting the highway in and of itself to the airport is pretty simple. You're just running two highways along each other and then you're routing a train track through them. The hard part comes at the interchange where you have so many different points for the highway to go to. You have it, you need it to go to the service area, to the service roads. You need it to go to the parking lot space. You need to go to the terminal. You need it to, it's, it's really complex, but eventually when you put in all the markings and when you finally look at the whole thing, it really does sort of come together. <laughs> After the highway connection was complete and I some generous decal placement, you can actually see I did quite a bit. I decided not to include that, it's really boring. Uh, I, I had to put down services because my buildings were just begging for them. And I'm sure people could figure out on their own, but I personally had trouble sort of deciding where to put it, and if I did then other people must have too. So I decided to include this. I'm only using, for the most part, I'm using Senfcorn's assets. Uh, this is the large police building and I'm just sort of clipping it into the terminal. I think it looks nice and it also sort of resembles like an end point. For fire stations, I'm also using uh, the Japanese, I think it is. It's a Japanese fire station, also by Ronix. In order to place it down, I'm putting down this A380 as a placeholder and then putting it far enough away. But still, I forgot the fact that I'm going to be widening the, the taxiways. So this is sort of, I, it's still not far enough in my opinion. So this part here is purely based off of this thing I saw at Toronto Pearson. It's really cool. It's They have a fire station on one runway, and it's quite far, but the road that leads to the runway then branches out into three, and I thought that looked really cool, and I tried to recreate, and I think I did it pretty well. And I, th I if, if you want to do that, you, sh uh, you go ahead. It's, it looks nice, and it's pretty realistic. All airports have multiple fire stations. For example, San Francisco International Airport has like three fire stations. And so I put another one here. It's again, the Japanese one. And you can see I put down some parking garages. I didn't include it because I mean, it's really, it's really basic. I don't think I need to explain how to put down parking garages. I put down some roads and I attached some parking garages to it. So at this point you can see the beginnings of what will be the interchange and I learned this pretty cool trick. I don't remember exactly from where but I saw a couple people use it. Basically when you're expanding the highway from three lanes to four lanes you can bend it in this way with move it so that it still appears straight but it makes it so that there's an actual sort of merge lane that appears to the right. I don't remember what it's called. I focused more researching on airports than highways. Um, and yeah, it, it just, it looks like a proper highway when it's expanding from three lanes to four lanes. You have one, a lane that opens up on the right, basically, and it allows, uh, to create a proper off-ramp or on-ramp. Um, as of right now, FBS episode two has just come out. I just watched it. It's really great. And if you want something like more in depth, you want a more in depth explanation on highways, something more complex, I recommend you watch episode one and two of FBS. They really do cover it a lot. Episode one is by Flock Strands. He made the main interchange. And then episode two is by Biskoglhausen. And he did some more highway stuff, a lot of highway stuff, but they also did place down their terminals. Keep in mind that FBS International Airport, they have more than one sort of separate building. They have multiple terminals while I just have this one huge horseshoe. If, if Vasimir 22 releases his new assets that he made, I will be making a terminal expansion. That's definitely something on my to-do list because I would want something bigger, I guess. 
So yeah, but if you if you want something probably more in depth with a way better explanation than I ever could do, because if you haven't noticed, I'm not that good at explaining stuff, then yeah, you should probably go check FBS out. screen right now I'm just creating some ramps uh, there's a lot of ramps that go to the service road area because I imagine there'd be a lot of a lot of traffic that needs to go there other than citizens and I am also adding a ramp to the what's it called it's like a secondary road that goes around the loop it's it's you can see it's on the inside it goes under the suspended monorail I noticed this a lot in airports and it basically that's from where uh, parking lots and all those other buildings kind of stem from. Also not completely sure if I mentioned this, but the elevated roads they have, for example, the arrival departure roads that go sort of in the loop, they're not highways because the highways, I have a three lane one on the top and a four lane one on the bottom. They're the small roads, but they're like high capacity. They're the small heavy roads, yeah. I think they come with network extensions too. They're really nice and small and because compared to a highway, they're huge. You have the four lane highway is just like two times the size of that and the three lane highway is still huge. So I did end up going with those and they're really nice. And I, I used those instead of two lane because this is a huge airport. And if you go to a huge airport, they don't have two lanes unless it's a smaller terminal. When my interchange, I did also add quite a bit of tunnels because I didn't want a huge stack interchange with, I don't know, roads going up to like 40 meters high. <laughs> um, and although they are underground, I didn't just take the easy way out and sort of clip the tunnels together or create an intersection. The tunnels are realistic. They do go under each other. It's fine. If you were to drive under there, you most likely would not crash unless there was a pillar there, which apparently pillars clip through all the way through the ground. that much I mean honestly I just this isn't really a collaboration so I don't really have other people to talk to and you know have different subjects to talk about so I'm just kind of looking over the footage and finding over finding stuff that probably are worth commentating over this for example right here I'm adding this sort of entrance to the parking lot this is the big parking lot it's there's a whole ton of these elevated sections and I noticed that a lot of airports of course they have these entrances to they are straight off of sort of the highway or one of those inner roads that's what I tried to do unfortunately cars don't actually use these roads to get in although there the road does cut up to the other side of the parking lot and it does go back out but cars don't use it as I like them to because they enter the parking lot through 
the road which it is placed on and it's placed on you know a zonable road and it's connected to there so yeah it it comes off of there and then it just take it just starts flying up towards because the cars use a linear path they just use a straight line so they pause right near wherever the the parking lot was placed and then they sort of just slowly hover up towards the parking spot i wish there was a more realistic way to do that sort of like how in the acid area you have pedestrian paths i wish there were like car paths vehicle paths but there isn't so i just make do with this adding some sort of realism so these tunnels and blocks are by Ronix. again he's like i said he's just he's he's a god in my eyes he has so many great assets and yeah these tunnels really look good so i added it, it as sort of an entrance hiding a sort of point where it gets into where the road enters the parking lot because it does clip through and that's kind of ugly <laughs> Continuing with the interchange, this is the this is going to be the main entrance point for the parking lot area. I didn't actually build the parking lot itself yet, so there is no technically an exit point yet. But yeah, this is where the parking lot's going to be. It's going to be off to the side. It's gonna, this is going to be the ground parking lot, by the way. This is not going to be the the covered one with the multiple layers. That one is always near the actual terminal. So yeah, try to recreate that. It's really not that hard. Th I got better with interchanges. I made one near the actual uh, downtown, which I didn't show, but I might one day show it off when we do an overview of the whole city. And yeah, I got better with interchanges. I've always been horrible at them, so I'm trying to sort of experiment with that. I use a fi I use fine road tools a lot. For example, this part I upgraded the up the road that passes over to an uh, elevated road, and then I use the ground ground road tool so I can sort of sink it underneath have a nice underpass <laughs> actually see I did quite a few of these markings they took such a hassle and my game crashed like three times in the process of putting them down so I, and it really is quite boring it's nothing that hard to really understand so I decided not to actually film that in reality you're just putting lines you can search at Google Maps or you can come up with something by yourself the lines look fine and I don't really think that it's that complicated that I need to explain it <laughs> This is sort of what we're left with. We have this giant interchange, we have the track running underneath, the station, the taxiways and runway, and this huge terminal that we built that I still left enough room that if we wanted to we could do an expansion. I'm, I'm really happy with the interchange, how it turned out. Uh, you can see that it's kind of a mess there in the middle, but 
still pretty good. It's, it's almost comparable to like a spaghetti, a sort of pile of spaghetti. And there's this sort of turnaround section here that I didn't show because it took, it's, it was such a hassle to do that I just didn't show it and came up with something on my own. There is quite, you could see I put a lot of decals, especially road wear and lines, but like I said, nothing too fancy that is worthy of explanation. And yeah, that's that's it. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out, and I'm really excited for next episode, which will be lights and r lines. Yeah, lights and lines. I'd like to thank all of you so much for watching, and I hope you all of you really liked this episode. If you did, leave a like and let a, leave a comment down below to tell me what you liked about it. And if, on the other hand, if you didn't like it, leave a dislike and tell me what you didn't like in the comments because I, I read all the comments and I'll know and I'll try to fix that or improve uh yeah so if you if you want to see more videos like this then you can subscribe we're 13 away at the moment from 3000 so let's let's make that happen also if you want to be notified of the next time I upload a video because you know it does take a while then click the notification button and it'll probably remind you but no promises anyways See you next time. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, retard, ten. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up.